Vincent Marini, the producing artistic director of Flat Rock Playhouse, and we are here today with the two stars of our upcoming production of Souvenir. Here we have Linda Edwards and Carl Danielson. And Linda, you have to you have to tell our, our audience how long you've been working at the Playhouse. How many shows is this? Oh, oh, it has to be 70, 75, I don't know. So you work I, here once a year? I, I know. She was here before. Oh. The, oh, that's not right. Oh. She worked here before there was a tent. I think no. <laughs> I'll just let you all keep up your comedy routine. And I've been here since 1988. I was a mere wisp of a child. Tell us about the first time you were introduced to the show. Well, I was introduced to the show when it was playing um, on Broadway, and I had some friends who had seen it, and all of them called me and said, there's this role you have to do. And I knew about Florence Foster Jenkins because when I was studying opera in college, she was very well known, <laughs> and we would sit around with a bottle of wine at night and play her recordings and laugh hysterically. Sure. And so I knew about Florence Foster Jenkins, um, but in 2007, um, Robin Farquhar, who was the head of the Playhouse then, called me and said, "We, I have this show that you have to do. Flat Rock was the first um, production that I'd seen, and I went, I want to go do this. I was the first person for the first day of their open call. Oh, boy. And I walked into the room, and I said, I'm here to audition for Cosme, and they were like, because they had been scared that no one sure, was going to sure. be interested in that. And then it worked out, and Linda and I had a mutual friend in New York, so we actually met before the production and bonded instantly. A lot of people have asked me, um, why should I go see the show? What, what would you both say to someone that says, well, why, why should I go see the show? Why, what is it about Souvenir that will draw me in? It's very fun, and it's kind of like that um, feeling of, of watching a car crash that you get <laughs> when you watch American Idol, and it's that first stream of auditioners, and it's kind of fascinating. You kind of want to look away, but you can't. It's, it's not opera. It's, oh, it's, no, no. It's, 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 people don't have to it's, like opera at all. It, it's to, a comedy, no, no, and no, it no. has music, and it, because it's a true story, it's so fascinating. And this woman, she she was well educated. She was very um, accomplished. Mm -hmm. She was uh, she was very adept at other kinds of music. She mm -hmm. was missing one little <laughs> tiny link, and that was that the one thing she wanted to do more than anything, which was sing opera, mm -hmm. she could not do. Yeah, but it's but hysterically funny and touching, and and she is the most inspiring person because she she loved what she did so much. She had such a joy. What I was saying to you both the other day is. It's one of the few scripts that I've read in the past three or four years that manages to be laugh out loud funny, mm -hmm. but at the same time, it's almost impossible not to tear up at the end of the show. Mm. It's one of those plays that I think the less you know going in, the better. And yeah. the more it unfolds, because you kind of can't believe where it goes. <laughs> and I think if you know, the more you know about it, the less pure yeah. your experience is. Yeah. You can just, wow, this is true story. Mm -hmm. I've had people who saw the show here in 2007 come to me through the years and say please please do that show again that was my favorite show and, and I'm thinking that little tiny wisp of a show is their favorite show and, and once you see it you understand <laughs>